Welcome back. There was a sit-in on the floor of Congress recently to oppose the current gun regulations in this country. Ron, do you think this was a legitimate tactic or just another political stunt? Both. And the reason I say both, the other side did the same thing. They wouldn't allow a vote, so what's the difference? Uh, you have a sit-in and you have a no vote. Who, anybody that <laughs> says that sit-in is an issue needs to look at what the Republicans did. They wouldn't allow a vote. Now, that's unconstitutional when you can't vote on an issue. Well, and I, you know, I think it's right. you're right. And I think what it really illustrates more than anything is that we have a broken legislature, le legislature in this country. Oh, yes. They don't really it. seem to do anything aside from act like yeah. spoiled three-year-olds, sit in their respective corners and throw things at each other. Yeah. Well, uh, I think, yep. I think, if, if, the, uh, yeah, I I think if, if the thought process is spoiled three-year-olds, then Donald Trump should fit in just fine. But he will, I mean, he will he, I think have he the would greatest be, Congress. I think he should. Be, he would be proud of what the, Democrat, paid by the taxpayers. Democrats Democrats did. He takes ball and goes on. I think he would probably do something very similar. Am I wrong, Ron? I, you know, he would. He would do it for attention. He would do it uh, for a stunt. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, ha how many stunts that, has he had already? He may do that with his campaign. Having he said that. Know. You know, he's not an elected official yet. Has been a stunt. He's not an elected <laughs> official yet. How did that look to other countries around the world? I don't think that added any value to America abroad. And it doesn't add any value with the Constitution of the United States of America that one political party won't allow a vote. Now, how does that look about around the world to a democracy? A democracy that won't allow a Supreme Court justice's name to come up for consideration, and you have a Constitution. Yeah. Where is the Constitution? Well, and, and well, I think the Constitution has been only used. Only a Second to, Amendment. We only have a Second Amendment in the Constitution. The Constitution <laughs> has been used as a paperweight for a long period of time, and I think both parties are guilty of having ignored, really, yes. the tenets, because ultimately, I think... The party establishments and the two main political parties in this country are not so much concerned about either moving the ball forward, about the good of the people, about anything other than ensuring that their own power base remains where it is and ensuring that they win the next I, election I or have as many more. numbers. And there, you're right. There is something fundamentally wrong when you have forces in a democracy that are not beholden to the voters, but are rather beholden to yep. perpetuating their own power base. Well, There's something you, fundamentally yeah. wrong with and that. And you know, I don't, I don't remember the exact statistics, but if I remember correctly, Congress has an extremely low approval rating, and Very yet they low. have an extremely high re-election rating. One of these two things should not be long with the other. <laughs> well, and that really plays into ultimately, and I think it's, it, it is a, it's a testament to the power base that two parties have established for themselves through gerrymandering. Yes. Through drawing districts where they pick the populations that suit individual candidates. They cater yep. districts to candidates. Look at our own district. Maryland is a great example of it. And again, I think in the other side or the other, the other um, side benefit or to the parties from this whole process is the fact that you have an electorate that is, has been focused on a bright, shiny ball, whatever that might be, <laughs> at, at yep. the detriment of having any sort of depth, not just awareness, but depth of issues. And I think, you know, Jim asked a good question earlier uh, to you, Ron. When you were running for office and you were walking around, I think people are much more involved in local issues because they tend to affect them more. When it yeah. comes to national issues, and especially here in the last few years, I cannot tell you how many people I've had tell me, well, I don't really follow politics because, you know, my vote doesn't really matter and doesn't really affect me. What? <laughs> like, how can you say that? Well, a lot of that depends on how much the candidate goes out and talks to people. I'm a people well. person. I talk to every, I like to talk, call to Ken. I'll give Ken a call every once in a while just to have a nice little yeah. conversation. But you have to get out and talk to the people. Well, and, and I not think be afraid. You have to understand the issues before you can talk about it. Right, issue. and that works, I think, on a congressional level, right? So then you're still dealing with a congressional district, or if you're in the Senate, you're dealing with, with a senatorial, with a state. Um, once you get into the national level of things, you can go out, a candidate, Donald Trump, um, provided people aren't trying to shoot him, Hillary Clinton, while she's staying in the shadows and avoiding the sun. Um, 
can go out and spend every single day talking to people and still talk to less than a percent of the population of the country. But the so. problem is with this issue, with this sit-in thing, we've got to stop the idiocy on both sides. That should have come to a but You're absolutely it's right. A, it's a circus. The Supreme Court nominee should have come to a vote. They had the votes to quash it. So if they wanted to quash it, they should have just quashed it with a vote. But we shouldn't let our court, because what, what is it next time? Two years? Oh, well, there's an election in two years. We can't appoint somebody because we want the next president. Well, now, I think there's yeah. a couple of things that need to happen with Congress. First of all, we should have some sort of term limits for these people. Yes. When somebody, when you hear about a congressman or a senator who has spent the greater part of their life, and in their, they're in their 70s or 80s, being a congressman or senator, there's probably something wrong with that because where is their relation to their actual voter, to the voters, to their constituents? It's not there. They've been living in Washington for. Well, it's been there. You've been there a long time. You've you've uh, had a lot of friends. You've had a lot of people in your district. You've helped, and they keep coming back. I was in for 20 years. I was in probably four years too long. I shouldn't have run the last time I did, but I ran because there was an issue on the sewer plant that if I wouldn't have run then I was backing away from what my philosophy was. And by the way, Ron, not to get off on a tangent, but you were proven right on the sewer issue yes. over time. <laughs> yeah. For after, the record. Yes, after a while I was proven right. So <laughs> you have so many people with allegiance to these congressmen. Yeah. They're not going to vote but, your congressman. You won't vote your But you know what? If you, had, if you had a term limit, the same way that you have for the president, then those allegiances would transfer into somebody else who conveyed the same philosophy and carried it forward. The reality, however, is in, in, our, in our parliamentary system, we are supposed to have parliamentarians, congressmen and, and uh, senators, who are representatives of the people. They're not supposed to be, if you really look at the, at the intent of the Constitution, to be career politicians. They're supposed to be representatives of the community that are representing the communities that they come from and are part-time politicians. And I think, you know, on, uh, again, on a local level, that works a lot better than it does on a national right. level. On a national level, you have these people who, to a large degree, have become Congress queens, if you will. The pr my, my point about the sit-in is that, you know, there's a lot of really, really important issues in this country, and we've got to stop this yes. buffoonery and start focusing and, and on the buffoonery. things that will we'll result. Look, sit down, have a conversation, some things will pass, some things will not pass, and that's fine. That's the way it's supposed to work. Maybe we ought to have an issue here one week that we all disagree on and see how long it can take us to come to consensus on what to do. <laughs> a lot shorter of a time than it would take Congress. Yeah. And actually, I think, Ron, I, you're going to get the last word on that. Next up, on the flip side, should the Board of Education members be appointed instead of elected? We will return in three minutes.